Good evening and happy midweek to all of you. Welcome to our Vesper, or no, midweek prayer meeting. <laughs> midweek prayer meeting. Welcome to uh, our meeting tonight. If you are watching from Abbotsford, welcome to our uh, prayer midweek meeting. And if you are from Surrey or Vancouver area, welcome to our midweek prayer meeting. If you are watching from the uh, Philippines, you're also welcome uh, in our prayer meeting. But uh, here in our place, it's already evening, so good evening. If you're in the Philippines, uh, well, good morning <laughs> to, to you. So, well, uh, before we proceed, I'd like to uh, make some announcements uh, here. As uh, many of you uh, knows that uh, this coming Sabbath we'll be having our communion uh, virtual service, okay? And I'd like to mention uh, uh, the pickup points for uh, Vancouver. You can get your bread and juice uh, if you live in Vancouver area. Uh, from uh, Levi uh, Bakaba, okay? Contact him and get your uh, communion service kit. You are from uh, Burnaby and New West. Uh, the pickup point is uh, Brother uh, Dan Tingson, okay? If you live in Burnaby or newest area. If you live in Surrey, uh, the pickup point is uh, the place of Brother Dan Vendiola. Okay, so please uh, contact these people and get your communion service kit. Okay, and we will do it on Saturday uh, through virtual meeting. Another announcement that I have here is, uh, as you all know, uh, Jen Bassett is in the hospital, in uh, Vancouver General Hospital, and uh, she needs type O plus blood. If you are type O plus, okay, please go to uh, Vancouver General Hospital and uh, you just uh, tell them that uh, you will give or donate blood for Jean Bassett. Okay, so those are the announcements. I will repeat this again on uh, Friday evening. All right. So once again, as usual, before we proceed, let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Tonight, O oh Lord, please uh, bless our meeting tonight. Bless all the people who will listen to this uh, virtual service. May we fully understand the uh, teaching of the Word of God so that we can share this to other people as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, our key text for tonight is uh, found in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Uh, I will give you uh, two minutes to get your Bible. Two minutes, okay? To get your Bible because this study is very important. And maybe most of you don't know about this. So I will give you... Two minutes to get your hard copy Bible or your electronic Bible. Or if you have the uh, paper and uh, ball pen, you can write down all the text because uh, this will help you a lot. Okay? So, are we ready? 
Okay, our key text this, mo uh, this evening is found in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing you will save both yourself and your hearers. Uh, Paul says to Timothy that he needs to say keep watch closely his uh, teaching and of course himself because according to him for by so doing you will save both yourself and your hearers and this is why uh, Paul said this to Timothy and this is also applicable to us as a church, we need to keep watch or pay attention to our teaching because uh, it will also save ourselves and also those who are listening to us. And uh, I would like to give to you, uh, this is part of our fundamental beliefs. I think this falls on number two, okay? And I'd like to give some text for you to read and see if our belief on the nature of Jesus Christ is biblically based. All right, so let's uh, begin here in chapter 1 of John. Okay, open your Bible with me to the book of John chapter 1. So by the way, I'll be using uh, English Standard Version, okay? John chapter 1, verse 18. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, He has made Him known. That is the first text. But I'd like to stress out the sentence, no one has ever seen God. Okay? That is one. No one has ever seen God. Then the next one is the statement of Jesus Christ in John chapter 6. And the verse is 46. Not that anyone has seen the Father... Except he who is from God, he has seen the Father. So, if no one has ever seen God the Father, then who is the God of the Old Testament that Abraham, okay, Isaac, and Jacob saw in the Old Testament? If no one has seen the Father, if no one has seen God, at any time. There's another passage in the book of 1 John. So turn your Bible with me to the book of 1 John. And you will see in chapter 4, verse 12. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love is perfected in us. So these three statements or these three texts from the New Testament says that no one has ever seen God. No one has ever seen the Father. So the question is, if no one has ever seen God or no one has ever seen the Father, who is the God of the Old Testament that Abraham Okay, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses saw in the Old Testament. Who is that God? And we will find out tonight uh, about the divinity of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because uh, I believe most of you uh, don't know about this, but uh, I will dwell on the Godhead. Okay? I will dwell more on the Godhead on this one. So, there is no issue or controversy 
that the Father is God, or we call it God the Father. Is there any statement in the Bible that the Father is God or God the Father? So, I hope you have your pen and uh, paper ready. So, the first text is Colossians. There are many texts in, in the New Testament, but I will just give you five, okay? There are many texts or passages in the New Testament that uh, God is called the Father, okay? And that is why it is uh, the statement of the Bible is God the Father. So, Colossians 3, verse 17. Colossians 3, uh, verse 17. And you will see there the statement of Paul, 3.17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So that's the statement, God the Father. Okay? Another statement is 1 Thessalonians 1, and the verse is 1. It says here, Paul Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace to you and peace. So again the statement there is God the Father. Another statement is 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 2 grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word there is God our Father. There's another statement, Galatians 1 verse 3, and the statement there is God our Father as well. Okay? In Galatians uh, chapter 1, the verse is 3. It says here, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Yes, in the Bible, there is God the Father. Okay, those are the texts from the New Testament. So there is no controversy on that one. God the Father. How about God the Son? Is there a statement from the Bible about God the Son? Okay, since I am using uh, English Standard Version... So, I will read from English Standard Version. Okay, John 1.18. John 1.18. This is about the Son, okay? John 1.18. From English Standard Version. And the word, no, 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 one eighteen. no one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. So no one has ever seen God, and then the only God, who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. That is from English Standard Version. Now I look at some other translation like uh, New Revised Standard Version, and it says there like this, No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made Him known. So the word there is God, the only Son. Because in one nature of God, there is only God the Son, and there is only God the Father, okay? So, they are not two gods, but their nature, well, what shall I say, nature, not the, not the divine, not the, the, the divine being, okay? Uh, their divine being is one, that is God. 
But in that one God, there is what we call God the Father, and now we have God the only Son. Okay? So let me repeat it again. When it comes to divine nature, there is only one, and that is God. But in that one God, there is God the Father, and there is God the only Son. These are not two gods, but when we say in the Bible, God the Son, or God the Father, that refers to divine persons, not divine nature. You get me? Because divine nature is one, and the divine nature of the Father and the Son is God. Right? But when it comes to divine beings or divine persons, I should say divine persons, we have God the Father, that is the Father, and the Son. They are not two gods, but two divine persons that possess one divine nature. You get me? That is why in the Bible, there is what we call, I gave you the text, God the Father and also God the Son. Let me repeat this statement from New Revised Standard Version of John 1.18. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made Him known. That is New Revised Standard Version. The Common English Bible put it this way. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made God known. In English Standard Version, no one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, He has made Him known. So this only God, okay, this is the only God who is at the Father's side that He has made Him known. Because no one has seen the Father. This the only God who is at the Father's side. He, the only God, has made Him known, meaning the Father. Only God the Son has made the Father known. Because according to the Bible, we read earlier, no one has ever seen the Father. Okay? In another translation, uh, like uh, I think New International Version, the one and only God. Okay? In New King James, maybe uh, begotten Son. Okay? But these are the translations. We can find that uh, there is also what we call God the only Son or God the Son. Let me repeat that again in common English Bible. No one has ever seen God. God the only Son who is at the Father's side has made God known. If there is Father, there is Son. Okay? So God the Father, we read that. I give you the five texts for that. The Bible called God the Father, God our Father. Now, how about God the Son? And I gave you those uh, Bible translations. Right. Uh, there's another passage. Uh, Titus 2.13. Okay. Open your Bible to Titus 2.13. These are the texts that we believe that uh, the Son is true God. Okay. Not half God. Not a demigod, but uh, true God, right? <laughs> so Titus 2.13, let us read from uh, Titus 2 and the verse is 13. Again, I'll be using English Standard uh, Version. Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, who will appear in the clouds of heaven? Well, in the entire Bible, it's none other than Jesus Christ. But Paul says here, uh, we are waiting for that blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Okay? So it here in here, Jesus Christ is called what? Great God and Savior that will appear. Okay? And we call that appearing as what? The blessed hope. Okay, the blessed hope, the appearance or the appearing of the glory of a great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Another passage in Hebrews 1.8. Let's take a look at Hebrews 1.8. So if someone asks you, uh, do you have biblical basis that the Son is God? So those are the texts, okay? So let's take a look at Hebrews 1 verse 8. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Now, when you read Hebrews 1, up to verse 8, you will see that the one is speaking here, or addressing, speaking, is none other than the Father. And the Father said to the Son, But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Now, if people will ask you like this, if the Father is God and the Son is God, well, there are two gods. What is your answer? No, there is no two gods. As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to the nature of God, there is only one divine nature and that nature is God. But there are two divine, let's say, persons. And we will discuss more about the Holy Spirit, okay? Maybe next week. So there are, but for now, the Father, Son, there are two divine persons. But only one divine nature. And what is the nature? The nature is God. Uh, let me give you one example. There is only one human being. What is the being? A people, human, homo sapiens, right? <laughs> but in homo sapiens, there are many races, right? Caucasian, we have Asian right? We have Latinos. We have Europeans. <laughs> there are many. But there's only one being and that is human being. The same thing, there is only one divine nature and that nature is God but there are two divine persons, the Father and the Son, right? So, uh, I hope that this one is clear. We will go to the Holy Spirit, maybe later on. But let's uh, focus on the, the Son first. So, Hebrews 1.8. And then another one is 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter. There are many texts, okay, in the New Testament, as well as in the New Testament, that the Son is truly God. But uh, I'll just give you this, these things for now. Second Peter, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? Again, uh, Jesus Christ is called God and Savior and in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. But also, Peter, Apostle Peter, sometimes addressed the humanity of Jesus Christ. And he called the man Jesus, okay? or the man Jesus Christ. We don't have any issue with that because the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He became human, right? That's why there's no controversy about that. But this one, when Peter wants to address about the divinity of Jesus Christ, he simply says, 
God and Savior Jesus Christ. But he want, if he wants to emphasize the humanity of Jesus Christ, in the book of Acts, he addressed Jesus Christ as the man, Jesus Christ, whom you crucified. The emphasis there is humanity. But in 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, the emphasis is the divinity of Jesus Christ, his deity. But some, you know, some Bible preachers and students, they, they want to fight the text here and the text here, and they cannot harmonize it. My simple answer to that is because they are not led by the Holy Spirit. Because I believe in the words of Jesus Christ, when He, the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will teach you all things. Uh, some Bible students, when they read about the humanity of Jesus Christ, and they read about the deity of Jesus Christ, they cannot harmonize it. Either they will reject one and focus on the humanity of Jesus Christ. Right? So, take a look at that. If they reject the testimony of the Bible and just focus on one, that is not the whole truth. So we must accept everything and then let the Holy Spirit harmonize this one. So let me repeat that once again. Sometimes, when Apostle Peter wants to emphasize the deity of Jesus Christ, he said, example, 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, he addressed Jesus Christ as this, To those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. The emphasis there is about the deity of Jesus Christ. But when you read the book of Acts, okay, chapter 2, you will find there the emphasis of Apostle Peter is about the humanity of Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> the humanity of Jesus Christ. And he says, you crucified the man, Jesus Christ. The emphasis is humanity of Jesus Christ. So let's continue. 1 John chapter 5 and the verse is 20. Okay? 1 John chapter 5 verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true and we are in Him who is true in His Son, Jesus Christ, He is the true God and eternal life. When you look at your Bible, uh, maybe the wording there is, uh, instead of He is the true God in eternal life, the word there is, this is the true God in eternal life. It's the same thing. It focuses on Jesus Christ. We are in Him, in His Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God in eternal life. Or like in my Bible, English Standard Version, uh, we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God in eternal life. When it comes to the nature of God, okay, there is no such thing as see my God or see me God or demigod. All right? It is only true God or not true God. Here, Apostle John says, He is the true God and eternal life. Okay? Why? Uh, look at First John. How Apostle or beloved John, you know, understood about the nature of Jesus Christ here. Who is the true God in eternal life? 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is a true God in eternal life, then you read 1 John chapter 1, okay? Verse 2. The life was made manifest. Who is the life? Jesus Christ, okay? And we have seen it and testified to it. 
and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father, okay? And was made manifest to us that which we have seen and heard and we proclaim to you so that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, this eternal life is with the Father. We proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father. So this is right, because in John 1.18, no one has ever seen God, okay? And it says there, it is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made Him known. This life, this eternal life is with the Father. In our Bible translation in, in Tagalog, walang sino mang nakakita sa Diyos magpakailanman. Ang Diyos na tanging anak, nakasama ng Ama, Siya ang nagpapakilala sa Kanya. Ang maliwanag. So in here, again, there are not two gods. There is only one divine nature. And what is the divine nature? God. But when it comes to persons, there are two divine persons. And that is the Father and the Son. And also the Holy Spirit. So we will go to the Holy Spirit. But I will focus more on the Father and the Son here. So when it comes to God, there is only one divine nature. That is God. But when it comes to divine persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right? Three persons. Divine, divine nature is one. That is God. So let's, but we will focus more on, on, on Jesus Christ. So 1 John 5.20, He is the true God and eternal life. Revelation 1.8. Go to Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Who is the Almighty? According to verse 8, the Alpha and the Omega, okay, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Who is this Alpha and Omega? Okay. Uh, verse 17 and 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. So the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the Almighty, according to verse 17 and 18, okay? He said, I died and behold, I alive. I am alive forevermore. So who is this? It is not God the Father. Because God the Father did not die on the cross. Only the Son who became flesh and dwelt among us who died in the cross and alive forevermore. So this, okay, this Lord God Almighty, okay, is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last who died for us when he became human like us. Okay, so he is the Lord God Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Another passage is, uh, chapter 2 verse 8 look at chapter 2 verse 8 Revelation and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write the words of the first and the last who died and came to life that is none other than Jesus Christ right but in verse 8 he is the Lord God Almighty the Alpha and the Omega 
Now let's take a look at uh, chapter 21, if this is also Jesus Christ. 21, and the verse is none other than 8. 21, verse 8. Okay, verse 6, sorry, 21 verse 6. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. I will be his God and he will be my son. Say, the father or the father, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, okay, uh, is also God to those conquerors, to those who will overcome. Because according to verse 7, I will be his God and he will be my son. So this is none other than Jesus Christ. Another passage is uh, Revelation twenty two twelve. Got Revelation twenty two twelve. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So who is this? The Lord God Almighty in Revelation one eight. Okay? And also Revelation one seventeen and eighteen. He died and rose again from the dead. But he is the Lord God Almighty. Now in here, uh, Jesus Christ repeated again when he said, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing with me my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Look at verse uh, 20. He who testifies to this thing says, Surely, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So who is that coming soon? Jesus Christ. Because according to verse 20, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And when you compare that to verse 12, Behold, I am coming soon. And also verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And compare that to Revelation 1, 8, 17, and 18, Jesus Christ or the Son, is the Lord God Almighty. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, He is the true God in eternal life. In Titus 2, 13, He is our great God and Savior, none other than Jesus Christ. Those are the texts, and even the Father says in Hebrews 1, 8, but of the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. So, in the New Testament, the Son is called God, the Son or God, the only Son. Because, why only Son? Because He is the only God who became Son. It is not the Father. That's why we have God the Father, or God our Father. I gave you five texts from the New Testament. But in that one God, there is only one person who became son and that is why it, he was called God the only son okay so let's take a look again at John 1 1 let's go back again to John 1 1 there what time is it 8 22 right John 1 1 let's take a look at John 1 1 What does your Bible say about John 1, 1? In the beginning, what? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It's very simple. The Word was God. What happened to this God? Verse 14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us or tabernacled among us. So this God became flesh. 
And that is none other than Jesus Christ. That's why when you look at verse 18, no one has ever seen God, the only God who was at the Father's side. He has made him known. So those are the texts that uh, tells us that the Son is God and the Father is also God. So when somebody asks you, so how many gods? There's only one God. For me, there is no confusion. If you're going to ask me, or some people ask me, how many God, how many God do you believe? There's only one God. Okay? But when you look at the entire Bible, uh, there is the Father and there is the Son. They are not two gods, but they they are two divine persons. Okay? They have only one divine nature. I hope you get that. The nature is God. The persons is the Father and the Son. And we will go to the Holy Spirit as well, uh, maybe later on. So, let me give you a hint in this one. If no one has seen the Father, who is the God of the Old Testament that Moses or Abraham, Isaac, J Jacob, Moses saw? If no one has seen the Father. Okay? That is the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. That is the Son. That's what my Bible uh, tells me. Now, let me give you some, some uh, hint there, right? So, I gave you the passage because no one has ever seen God at any time. That's the, that's the statement of Jesus Christ, right? That's the statement of Jesus Christ. So, I'll give you the passage there. John 1 18, no one has ever seen God. John 6 46, no one, ha no one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Okay, only he has seen the Father. And then 1 Timothy 6 16, who alone possesses immortality, dwells in a approachable light, whom no man has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. And First John also chapter 4. Uh, let me read that part. First John chapter 4. It says there in verse 12, No one has ever seen God. So if no one has ever seen God, who is the God of the Old Testament? That Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, and Moses saw, and some of the prophets. That is not the Father. That is the Son. Okay, I'll give you the text. Okay? Open your Bible with me to the book of Genesis 12. Okay? Genesis 12. One and two and seven. So I hope that uh, you are writing down those uh, texts. Okay? Genesis 12, 1, 2, and 7. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house, and so on and so forth. And then verse 2. Uh, I will make you a great nation. Okay? And then verse 7. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built, there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. If no one has ever seen God or the Father, who is that? If Jesus Christ is telling the truth, if he is telling the truth, then that is not the Father. That is God, the only Son. Genesis 15, verse 7. Okay. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out from the poor of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. That is, uh, again, the Lord uh, 
said something to Abraham. And then when you look at verse 13, same chapter, it says, God said to Abraham, No for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, where they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. Okay. And then when you get to uh, Genesis 17, so we are dealing chapter by chapter, 17, 1 and 2. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. So the Lord who appeared, or the Lord God who appeared to Abraham is the Lord God Almighty. So who is the Lord God Almighty in Revelation 1.8? The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And in the book of Revelation, it's not other than Jesus Christ. Right? So, if somebody uh, tells you, well, Jesus Christ is not the Lord God Almighty, you have to clarify, what do you mean? Are you talking about the human nature of Jesus Christ? Or the deity of Jesus Christ? Because I know they will read about, or the emphasis, they will read uh, text that emphasize the human nature of Jesus Christ. And they will not read about the text that emphasize the deity of Jesus Christ. That's why you have to ask questions. And that is the secret of knowing some biblical passages. Ask the right questions. If people ask you and said, and read from the Bible, why in the Bible it says we have uh, advocate with the Father, the man, Jesus Christ. But what is the emphasis there about the humanity of Jesus Christ? But there are some other texts in the Bible that the emphasis is the deity of Jesus Christ. So there is no uh, conflict. The conflict is with the mind of people who close their minds to understand the revealed texts of the Bible. Let me repeat that again. Some people will pick texts that suit their understanding, their ideas. And they will reject texts that contradict their idea or their teaching. But for us, the remnant people of God, we read the entire Bible and we ask the right question. Okay? So, this is one, another passage here. Now, chapter 18, look at chapter 18, verse 1. The Lord appeared to him. Who appeared to him? The Lord. Now, when Abraham looked up, how many did he see? How many? In verse 2, how many? Three men. You see? <laughs> the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. Why not one? Why not two? Why not three? The first concrete Revelation of the Bible about the three persons. It doesn't say the Lord's appeared to him. No. The Lord appeared to him, but when he looked up, he saw three men standing in front of him. Right? Some people will, will reject that. <laughs> but again, read the entire chapter and you will see it is actually the Lord speaking to Abraham. I will give you the text. Okay. Look at the text here. Verse 5. While I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said they is in plural. 
right? This is in line with verse 2. Three men were standing in front of him. So, they said, do as you have said. And then verse 9, they said to him in plural, because the Lord appeared to him when Abraham looked up in verse 2, he saw three men standing. That's why the, the statement, the, the story is in line with uh, chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. So in verse 10 or verse 9, they said, it is in plural. Again, in my study, in my reading of the Bible, this is the first statement, concrete statement, that talks about the uh, plurality of the Godhead. There are three men, three persons. But verse 1 says, the Lord. It doesn't say the Lord's, but only the Lord. But when he looked up, three men were standing. So again, verse 9, they said to him. Now look at verse 10. The Lord said. Then also in verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? And when you look at this, uh, verse 22, so the man turned from there and went towards Sodom. How many men appeared to Abraham? Three. Two men. The man turned from there and went to Sodom, but Abraham is stood before the Lord. See? Still, God or Abraham was talking to the Lord while the two, why two? I will tell you later. This man turned from there and went to Sodom. And you can read from verse chapter 19, uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Chapter 18, verse 33, after this conversation, okay? The Lord went his ways when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. What happened to these two, two men? Verse 9, chapter 19. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening. And look at how, how Lot addressed these two angels. In verse 16. But he lingered, so the man, the man seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. You see, you, I will give you the time to read chapter 18 and chapter 19. You will see. Because I believe the Holy Spirit will guide you into all the truth. These two men, according to two angels, according to 16, uh, address us the Lord being merciful to him. I will give you about this because in the entire Bible, sometimes uh, God appeared as an angel. Angel means messenger, right? Sometimes the Holy Spirit appeared as an angel. That's why the word here in chapter 19, two angels. And when you read the entire story, beginning from chapter 18, and you read 19 to 22, the two angels, the two men, went to Sodom. And when they arrived, the Holy Spirit, chapter 19, puts here two angels, not two men. Two angels. So where is the other man? When you look at uh, chapter 18, 22, the other one is still talking to Abraham. While the two went to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Here in Sodom, chapter 19. So the one left, he was talking to Abraham. The two went to Sodom. Okay? But in verse 16, it says, But he lingered, so the man seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him and set him out outside of the city. Now again, in verse 21, he said to him, Behold, I grant you this favor also, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Escape there quickly, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. 
Therefore, the name of the city was called Suwar. 23. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Suwar. Then the Lord reigned on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire. From what? From the Lord out of heaven. You get that point? Let me stress that point. The Lord reigned on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire. From where? From the Lord out of heaven. One is in heaven, the Lord. And there's another one, verse 24, The Lord reigned on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire. From the Lord out of heaven. Chapter 18 and chapter 19 is very important. Okay? Now, so who is that God that appeared to Abraham, the Lord God Almighty? Okay? I have so many texts here and we will not de go detail on about the anger of the Lord uh, right now. But I'll give you the appearance of this God. Chapter 26 of Genesis. Verse 2. Now, and the Lord appeared to him and said, Who? Oh, let's let's uh, read verse 1. Now, there was a famine in the land besides the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gerar in, to, to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, So who appeared to Isaac? The Lord appeared to him. Okay? That is another passage. Verse 24. The Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the Lord God of, excuse me, of Abraham, your father. So this is the same Lord that appeared to Abraham. And then there's another passage here. I will, you can just read uh, Genesis 28 about Jacob's dream, dream beginning from verse 10 up to Verse 22, you just write it down and read it for yourself and you will see there, the Lord appeared to him. Okay, now, look at chapter 31 of your Bible. I will give you an example about the angel of the Lord. Genesis 31, beginning from verse 11. The angel of God said to me in the dream, this is Jacob, okay? Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift up your eyes and see all the ghosts that mate with the flock are striped, spotted, and mottled. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel. Now when you look at verse 11, the angel of God said to me in the dream, so who was talking to, to him? The angel of God. And then verse 13, this angel of God said, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and a made a bow to me, bow to me. Now rise, go out from this land and return to the land of your kindred. Okay? This is one example. But, but my point is, uh, the Lord appeared to Jacob. Now, when you open your Bible to Exodus, I think we'll, we're done with this one. Exodus. Okay, Exodus. I'll be reading from King James Version Easy Reading. Okay. Exodus. Chapter 3. Verse 2. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Let me repeat that part. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame. Now, verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the midst of the bush. You just read this part, okay? Exodus 3. 2 to 4, and 6. Look at verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Asa, 
the God of Jacob. So, the God who appeared to him, uh, to, to Moses, is the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the Lord God Almighty. Now, verse 14. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Who is that I am? In the book of John. Jesus Christ, right? Before Abraham was, I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the light of the world. I am the living water. He is the I am. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And now look at here, verse 15. And God said, moreover to Moses, Thus shall you say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Turn your Bible to chapter 6 of Exodus, verse 2. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. And I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. This is based on King James Version is read. Okay? So he is the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah, he is the great I Am. And in the New Testament, this is none other than Jesus Christ. The same in Revelation 1.8, the Lord God Almighty. But people, some people say, oh, you know, Jesus Christ is not the Lord God Almighty. That is not true. My Bible tells me that Jesus Christ said, no one has ever seen God. No one has ever seen the Father. And we ask the right question, if Jesus Christ uh, mentioned that that there is no one who has seen the Father who is the God of the Old Testament that Jacob or Abraham Isaac Jacob and Moses saw if no one has ever seen the Father there is only one conclusion according to the testimony of the scriptures that is none other than God's Son who became flesh, and dwelt among us. What a lovely Savior. He is God who became us to save us from our sins. So, again, uh, I, I will discuss this again uh, next uh, presentation, but I dwell more on the deity of Jesus Christ. Those texts that I read and gave you, those are the texts that uh, mention that Jesus Christ is the true God and the Lord God Almighty. I hope that this helps you with your study of the Bible. So if you write it down, those texts, please read it again, and you will see truth in those uh, passages of the Scriptures. So after this... Uh, I will dwell maybe next about the Holy Spirit, okay? Where can we find in the Bible that the Holy Spirit is called Lord? So, just wait for that. And I believe this book, okay, the Holy Scriptures will guide us to find that answer. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, that we have a Father like you, who knows us and who loves us, and who heals our diseases, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that guides us throughout our study, and tonight, Heavenly Father, we are lifting up to you 
uh, Sister Jean Bassett, we are asking you to heal her, Heavenly Father, from her sickness. And thank you, O Lord, for strengthening her. And I also lift up to you, our brothers and sisters who are watching right now. Some are watching from the Philippines, from Abbotsford, from the Lower Mainland, and here in Surrey. Bless us, O Lord, tonight. Thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, happy midweek, everyone. May God bless you. And good night.